Hello and welcome to the Do-Yourselfers Guide to Working with PVC. Today we're going to be talking about PVC, a polymer which is used in a ton of different applications and is especially helpful for us at, you know, at home working on do-it-yourself projects because it's low cost and very strong. So PVC is a polymer, it's a plastic, it's known as the its full name polyvinyl chloride and essentially it is a makeup of a bunch of very large molecules and these large molecules all come together and make it a very strong and high density plastic so it's used in a ton of different applications from plumbing to I'm using it right now to hold it to make this tripod um, it's a fantastic material and I'm going to tell you a lot about you know why we're using it. A few, a few things kind of like standard PVC things that we need to get out of the way uh, before we start talking about it. And number one is the fact that PVC comes in two different types of what they call schedules. They're basically two different dimensioning styles. The only difference between the schedule is that the schedule 40 PVC is a thinner uh, thickness uh, pipe and the Schedule 80 is a larger thickness pipe. So when I talk about thickness, what I'm really talking about is the wall thickness. So this is a half inch Schedule 40 pipe and the wall thickness here is rather small compared to what you see with the Schedule 80. So Schedule 40 and Schedule 80 pipe are your main things you're gonna be working with and Schedule 40 is probably the stuff that you're gonna commonly find at the store. You wouldn't need really anything stronger than this, anything more durable. Schedule 40 is what you're gonna be using. Uh, PVC is, comes in different diameters, so this is obviously this is a half inch as I mentioned before, and it comes in up to quarters all the way up to one and a half, and then it goes all the way. I think standard you'd get like 16 inches is is a, is a common biggest size. So it comes in a large range of sizes, and it's very helpful to be able to pick the right size uh, for your stuff. So along with regular PVC, we have another type of PVC called CPVC. And now uh, CPVC might get you confused. You might be like, oh, well, isn't that just the same thing as PVC? Are they mispronunciating it? No, and it's actually a different substance chemically than PVC. So you had your Schedule 40 and your Schedule 80. Uh, those are all the same substance, but CPVC is actually chlorinated PVC or chlorinated polyvinyl chloride. So they're essentially adding in more chlorine molecules. The chlorine is added in in a design function to help it actually withstand more temperature. So the melting point of PVC regularly is around 140 degrees Celsius and adding in that extra chlorine brings that temperature way up. So the next we want to talk about the properties of PVC. PVC is a very rigid durable, you know, chemically resistant material. And, you know, if you're using it in place of something like wood, it's not something that's going to be rotten. It's not something that's going to, you know, have a, pro a poor grain or anything like that. So PVC is very valuable for that reason. And we're using it in our do-it-yourself projects because, I mean, it's not a steel. It's not a, you know, it's not anything, you know, that durable. But it's very cheap, so we're going to be able to take advantage of these awesome properties it has without having to spend a lot of money. Uh, you know, first, it's something that doesn't conduct a lot of heat. So thermal conductivity is basically how much heat it conducts through it. Uh, if, it had, if it was a metal, thermal conductivity is super high. The next thing we're going to be, we have is yield strength. So yield strength is essentially the amount of pull that you get. So if I were to pull this apart, how much strength does it actually have and so this is in pressure units uh, basically you can discover how much force a PVC can take if you find the area of the pipe and that's that's not just the whole circle but that's just how much material is actually there um, and then I uh, use force divided by area and so that is how you find your force uh, so that in a lot of situations you're not going to be putting PVC in like a ton of tension so it's not like the biggest deal in the world but another something that's kind of important is Young's modulus, which is the elastic modulus. It's basically how rigid the material is. It's literally a measure of how much deflection you get per amount of force. So PVC is something that has a pretty high Young's modulus, uh, meaning that it's not going to move much when you're bending it. So it's not going to stretch. It's not like a rubber band. Flexural strength. So this stuff is very strong bending. I mean, it's 
It bends easily because it has a, a I mean, a relatively low, low Young's modulus. It bends, it bends easily, and it bend, it takes a lot of strength. So you're going to be able to really put a lot of stress on, you know, this as a support. Even though it will bend, um, it will not break. So the next thing we want to talk about is compression strength. So PVC is a compressive, you know, structural member, very strong. It's, you know, similar to. It's about twice as strong in a compressive situation as poplar wood, so that's another pretty cheap uh, do-it-yourself material that we'll probably talk about, you know, shortly. So, you know, you're comparing it to it with something that has very, you know, inconvenient grains. You're comparing it to something that has splinters and puts a ton of dust in the air, and you know, you're getting something now that has, you know, double the amount of strength as that compressive. So that's really nice. Thermal expansion is not going to expand much when you heat it. I mean, in very tight scenarios, you know, that's that's going to matter, and yeah, it's pretty strong there. So other stuff, not really as big of a deal, but yeah, we have a lot of really nice properties here. If you were to compare this to something like steel or you know other woods, I mean, you'd see comparable strength of wood in a lot of a lot of situations. But steel really, you know, I mean, steel is much stronger. But this is cheap. This is very cheap. So we're looking at a very good high quality structural member in a lot of different situations. So the next thing we want to talk about is, so how do you work with PVC? Uh, so now we understand that it's, it's something that's strong is going to be able to use in our projects. You know, how do you actually work with it? You know, what's a good way to cut it? How do you glue it? You know, what should you use? Things like that. So we're going to go over um, a few of these methods here. So PVC is a very workable and friendly material. Uh, you're going to be able to, it's very easily cuttable with a, saw, a hand saw. You can bend it with a heat gun, you can drill it, you can do whatever. Uh, so PVC is very nice in that regard. Um, as far as tools go, uh, you're going to want to, if you're using a handsaw, I mean, kind of the principle behind this, I don't want to cover everything because there's so many things you can use to cut this stuff, but kind of the main principles are you want a saw with a fine blade, meaning that you're not having, you don't like, if you look at like a table saw or something like that, these, these blades have a significant amount of split spacing. If you're using something like a coping saw, for example, the coping saw is going to have very small space between the blades, and you're going to be able to just slide. Um, you can even use abrasive substances like or stone cutter, you know, something like that, or something that would be used to cut metal. Also, very nice for that, um, just because of that fine, those fine teeth. It's pretty easy to cut. Uh, so it also can be sanded. You can. Uh, cut it in half, you can do all these things. Yeah, as far as uh, gluing goes and adhesive, you want to use something that is strong and, and basically has a, a, a good chance to bond to the PVC. Um, you can use hot glue with it. Hot glue is a little tricky, and I'll mention that later, but I would recommend something like super glue if you want to use it as a structural member. If you want to actually stick together uh, two pieces of pipe, then you should be using a PVC cement. That allows for that really tight connection uh, around the pipe and also doesn't allow for a lot of, a lot of adhesive clumping, so that's nice. Uh, so back to the hot glue thing. So if you are going to use hot glue with PVC, you first want to sand down the area that you're going to apply the hot glue to. Uh, this hot glue is not going to stick to this PVC. It's going to basically like, cut, like hold it and stay there, but if you put any force on it, it's going to peel right off. If you actually sand it down, you're going to get into the grain of the, you know, into the kind of like, you know, junkiness of the material as opposed to the smooth, you know, the smooth surface, and you're going to be able to get a really nice bond with that hot glue. And you want to use a very high heat glue. You want to, you know, turn that. If you have a glue gun, you should have a glue gun with two settings, uh, high and low, and Definitely go to the high. I also developed a technique. If you're going to be using uh, a PVC to metal bond, then you're going to have some difficulties there because the PVC, you know, is, has its has its weaknesses with hot glue, um, and also metal is extremely bad with hot glue. I mean, a, a really, you know, a clean metal is going to be very difficult to glue. So you're going to want to sand uh, the PVC like you would regularly. And then you're also going to want to maybe apply a piece of duct tape or something like that along that metal surface. So if you do that, you can actually adhere to the, the hot glue, the, the duct tape and get a much stronger bond than you would if you were hot gluing directly to that metal. So that's just a little tip for you. Uh, use a piece of tape over your metal when you hot glue it.
Uh, I mentioned that you can bend PVC. What you want to do is use a heat gun and basically apply it evenly along the PVC. And it'll eventually get to a point, you know, I think it's around 130 degrees Celsius, where it gets really flexible and you can bend it into whatever shape you want and leave it there and it will set for you. That kind of lets me go into my last topic, which is PVC safety. Uh, safety with PVC is incredibly important. It's pretty simple. I mean, PVC is something, I mean, it's a material. It's going to react to things that you, you know, you apply to it, whether it's force, whether it's a chemical or whatever. PVC is luckily very chemically resistant, but it also has some nasty chemicals inside of it. So if you were to heat up PVC above that burning point, you will release extremely toxic gas. Um, it's not good for you to breathe that stuff in. If you are cutting it with a very high speed saw, you know, something that is doing more burning than actual sawing, then you might be releasing that gas, you know, to a small concentration. I mean, it's not going to really hurt you too bad. But make sure that you're not getting this stuff, like, on fire. It would be very, very, very bad for you. You know, additionally, if you're cutting, uh, you want to make sure that you're wearing safety glasses and a face mask because when you do cut this, I mean, just like your wood, you're going to be releasing fine dust particles. And breathing that stuff in, it's going to be cut in your, cut in your lungs, not a good thing for you. Um, and additionally, you're going to have a good chance of that stuff getting in your eyes. So you wear those safety glasses. Um, even recommended to wear gloves, um, you know, using any cutting equipment. So that's important. And actual, you know, there's, there's safety issues related to using PVC as like a structural member or handling a lot of pressure. Uh, this PVC is Schedule 40 half inch PVC. I think that all Schedule 40 PVC is meant to adhere to a certain pressure standing. But for right here, we have, I mean, this is a 600 PSI uh, pipe, so if you are going over that 600 PSI, then you have a chance of rupturing this, and that is, unfortunately, a good chance of release it in, like, very brittle, glassy shards, and that is, I've known, I've, I've read reports uh, by OSHA where it's, you know, people have died from getting in, basically impaled by uh, broken PVC, so be careful there. As a structural member, this stuff does bend, and you gotta you gotta take that into account if you are gonna try to use it for something that, I mean, it can support a lot of weight vertically, directly on it. But if it if you get it, you know, such that one end's fixed and the other one's slightly off kilter and it's bending, you know, that could cause some problems for you. It's not really gonna fatigue a lot there, but definitely definitely noting that use the thicker PVC for higher weights. Um, and maybe even choose a better material if, if you're using extremely high weight, uh, especially in a temperature situation, as high temperature situation as PVC does degrade and, and lose and lower its mechanical properties at high temperatures. So, you know, with that, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope that you learned a lot from it. I hope that you discovered some techniques so that you can master working with PVC and understand when it's a good choice to be in your project and, and when not to. Uh, so yeah, I, I appreciate you watching.